to make a utopia, but he'll never make a utopia because man is fallen. Man is fallen. You can try politics, you can try science, you can try philosophy, and man can try and build and build and build, but no matter how much he builds, he is a fallen human being. He is a fallen condition, and man is in a state of fallenness. And that's why we see ISIS all over the place. That's why we see terrorism all over the place. That's why we see corruption all over the place. That's why we see it because man is in a fallen condition, but God didn't leave it there. God came down in Jesus Christ. In the beginning, God, God, do you remember? In the beginning is the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And in the midst of man's fallen condition, God came down to rescue man. God came down to rescue man. By dying on a cross. By dying on a cross. And there on that cross, that was God's rescue mission for humanity. God's rescue mission was to die on that cross. <laughs> That's God's rescue mission. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever believes on Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And if you follow politics, it'll take you to hell. If you follow science, it'll take you to hell. If you follow reason, it'll take you to hell. Why? Because man is in bondage. Man is fallen. Man is in a fallen condition. And man is in ruins. And all that man builds, all that man builds, in his art and philosophy and science will crumble because man is fallen but God didn't leave it there God came down in Jesus Christ and God came and died on that cross to redeem us on that cross to save us from the catastrophe that is here and is coming upon us and Christ died and took the wrath and the punishment and the judgment for you and me and there on that cross the Son of God died and that was God's rescue mission for the world and it is the rescue mission for you and you and you that Christ died on that cross and you can live in the ruins of humanity in the ruins of humanism in the ru ruins of philosophy and you can live in the ruins of politics but in the midst of the ruins you can come out of the ashes into the glorious liberty and power of Jesus Christ where he covers you with his blood and covers you with his righteousness and covers you with his cleansing and covers you with his blood and saves you and makes you anew by the blood of Jesus and sets you free from drugs sets you free from alcohol and gives you a new life new power and hope in the blood of Jesus for Christ died and rose again and conquered death. And he broke the bonds of death. And death has no sting no more. Death has no power no more. Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Isaiah 53, my Jewish friends. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And if you want to come out of the ruins of humanity, if you want to come out of the ruins of humanism, if you want to come out of the ruins of atheism, and the ruins of religion, and the ruins of mankind, if you want to come out, and you want to come home to God, Christ died on that cross Not sick, to set you free. He died to set you free and took your wrath and took your punishment upon that cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And you can have everlasting life today by believing in Jesus Christ the Son of God. He said I am the way, the truth and the life. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the only way to be saved today. God did a rescue mission in Jesus. And the only hope for humanity, the only hope for salvation, is in Christ. That 
is the only hope, my friends. And if you consistently go with man, if you consistently go with this world, this system will screw you up. This system will eat you up. This system will take you down to the very dregs of hell forever and ever. But if you come to Christ and find in Him your salvation, and find in Him your hope, in Him your strength, in Him your power, in Him your salvation, then you'll be saved and born again. And not only saved today, but saved out of the ruins of this world and saved for everlasting life. The devil has a home in hell and the devil wants to take you to hell. And he's giving you your drugs. He's giving you your sex. He's giving you what you want. And you're playing his game and you're being taken to hell. And there in hell, you cannot get out. There in hell, you cannot break free. But the devil is playing his tune. The devil is playing his pipes. And you're dancing all the way to hell on the ticket of sex, on the ticket of drugs, on the ticket of gambling. And the devil is playing and you're going with the devil right to hell. But Jesus broke the power of the devil. And Jesus came and died for you on that cross. And Jesus set you free today. So come and know his love today in your life. Know the love of God in your life. Know the joy of the Lord in your life. Know the power of God. Christ, Christ is almighty. Christ is king. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. He is above Theresa May. He is above Nicholas Sturgeon. He is above the Pope. He is above Richard Dawkins. He is above Mohammed. Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Above Trump as well. He is above Trump. He is above spice. He is above alcohol. He is above drink. His name is Jesus Christ. And Christ can set you free today. Come to him. Don't go with this world and be lost forever and ever and ever in eternity. Burning and crying and moaning and screaming, let me out. Let me out. I'm in agony, let me out. And you'll never get out of hell. You'll never get out of hell. You'll knock and knock and knock and knock and you'll never ever get out of hell. You'll cry and plead, but you'll never get out of hell. But if you continue to go this way of the world, you will be in hell and you'll never get out of hell. But Christ, Christ shed his blood that you may never go to hell. He shed his blood and went to hell for you. He shed his blood and died for you. He shed his blood and took the wrath for you on that cross. I don't care. I don't care if you say I'm not politically correct. God ain't politically correct. God ain't politically correct. If you follow political correctness, my friend, I'll see you in hell. Because that's where political correctness will take you. God ain't no politically correct God. God is above political correctness. God is greater than political correctness. Political correctness comes and goes, but God is forever. And His Word is forever. And what man says you do not listen to, you listen to what God says. Nicholas Sturgeon will go. Theresa May will go. They'll all go. All the movements will go. But God will not go. His Word will not go. So my friend, there's only two things to do. Bow the knee to Jesus and find his love in your life. The love of God for you on that cross. The Son of God who died for you on that cross. That's one way to go. The other way to go is stick two fingers up at God. Two fingers up at me and go to hell. It's your choice today. It's your choice. Don't go to hell today. God is a great God. The ruins of humanity is here. Man cannot build on politics. 
He cannot build on science. He cannot build on philosophy. Mankind is in ruins because mankind has fallen. He has fallen from grace. But God has come to rescue you out of the ruins of humanity by dying on the cross and shedding his blood. I will go home today. If you can defeat me today in argument, come and defeat me right now and prove me wrong. How did something come from nothing? How did the universe come from nothing? Defeat me right now and I'll go home. Defeat me right now and I won't preach. How did the universe come from nothing? Defeat me right now and I won't preach. Defeat me right now and I'll go home. Prove to me how did the universe come from nothing? It cannot happen. A mind created the universe. You do not get nothing from nothing. All you get from nothing is nothing. God created the universe. God and mind. And you were meant to know God. Not smoke a spliff. Not take spice. Not get drunk. Not catch sexual diseases. You were made to have a relationship with Jesus. You are made to have a relationship with God. Mankind is in ruins. His politics is in ruins. His religion is in ruins. His philosophy is in ruins. Science is in ruins. It's all in ruins. And it's all falling apart. But God had a rescue mission. He came down and died on that cross for you. He died on that cross. Jump on the rescue mission of Jesus and have faith in him. Trust Him as your Saviour. Trust Him as your Saviour and your Lord while you can. Trust Him while you can. Have faith in Him while you can. Trust Him while you can. Believe in Him while you can. And find the peace of God. Find the love of God. Find the joy of Jesus. Find the power of God in Him. Find God in your life. The life of God. The joy of the Lord. Find Him today. While you can. And don't drink the dregs of mankind. Don't drink the dregs of the devil. They wants to delude you with drugs. And delude you with sex. And delude you with gambling. And delude you with spice. And delude you with porn. He wants to delude you and take you to hell. Don't listen to his deception. Shake it off. And come to the word of God. They will set you free the power of his word. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation. The power of God to change you. The power of God to set you free. You want to set free today. Christ will set you free. He will change you and give you a life. He will set you free today. Jesus will set you free. He is the Savior today. The same today, yesterday, and forever. He will change you. You've got any questions, bro? Any arguments, questions? Are you an atheist? Any reasons why you're an atheist? Explain to me, explain to me as an atheist, how something came from nothing. Go for it, bro. Explain to me how something came from something. I'll do that, but you tell me how something came from nothing. Go on, bro. If you do, I'll become an atheist right now. Oops. I don't know. Popped out, like grew out the ground. I'll become an atheist right now if you tell me how something came from nothing. You can't explain it. There's the atheist for you. Respect, mate. I respect you, yeah? But you can't, you can't give the argument. How can something come from nothing? Come on, bro. Hey, you can't do it, you see? You can't explain it. You can't explain it. The atheist couldn't explain how something came from nothing. Doesn't make sense. Jesus Christ created this world and he came and died for you on this cross on the cross. And he wants to set you free today. Have faith in him. I like that smile, she's got a good smile. Jesus Christ died on that cross to set you free today. Remember, he came to set you free. Look to him today. That's a, that's a good question. He's asked me. I asked the atheist how something can come from nothing, and nothing cannot come 
from something gotta come from nothing, yeah? So we're either gonna go with science or we're gonna have to have a supernatural explanation. Yeah? Right? Are you listening? Listening? Now, when I look at the universe and I see something, I see order, I see a mind. I see you've got a mind, I've got a mind. So when something came from nothing, it can only be a mind that produced the something from nothing. Would you agree? Would you agree? How do you get mind from nothing? If there's nothing, how do we get a mind from nothing? Okay, I respect what you're saying. You're saying, you're saying it's a slow process, yeah? I understand what you're saying, it's a good point. You're saying, you're assuming, you're not, you're not taking into consideration all the time that mind can develop. But here's the point. There was nothing in the universe, right? Let, 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 let me just say, there's nothing in the universe where you have a mind. So how can nothing produce mind? Yeah. Logic tells you mind produces mind. So when there was nothing, there must have been a mind before the nothing, which is God, that produced the nothing to be something which was mind. So you have mind plus mind equals mind. You've got nothing plus nothing equals mind. Does it work? Well, by definition, creation means physical. If I say who created this or that, it means physical. But God, by definition, is not physical. By definition, by definition, by definition, he's eternal. But my friend, I really respect you because it takes a lot of courage for you to stand there, bro. It takes a lot of courage. So if you want to engage, yeah? I can, in, in this case, if, I can, I can, I can, if, I, if I say, what, what, what's, that, what's that made of? There's sugar in that, yeah? Right. So by definition, that sweet has sugar. Yeah? That's in its character, in its nature, explains itself. Sugar, sweet, yeah? When I say God, by definition, is eternal. That's the explanation. So when you say it doesn't explain anything, no, I'm saying by, by the very nature of God, He is eternal. That explains it. Just like by the very nature of that sweet, it's sugar. You can push it back and say, well, it's made of not just sugar, but the stuff. But at the end of the day, it's just plain semantics there. Yeah? God, by definition, is eternal. Here's a question. Do you believe Jesus Christ existed? Uh, are you an atheist? No. Uh, are you an atheist? What? Yeah. Guys, guys, are you, are you an atheist? No. Are you an agnostic? What is your position? In a debate, in a debate, yeah? In a debate, it's fair for the person to say what their position is. So what is your position? My position is, I'm a born again Christian. Honest, above board, that's what I am. What's your position? Okay, are you an agnostic? Okay, so do you believe Jesus existed? You don't believe Jesus existed? You don't believe he existed? What evidence do you have for that statement? Well, I can say there's cheese on the moon, and if I make that statement, I've got to prove it. You say that Jesus didn't exist, you have to prove it. I'm going to give you the evidence for my position, but you're going to give your evidence for your position. It is. Because in whoever well, I see, I can see in their the, the body, you know, red blood. Same, same thing you want. No matter whether it's a Muslim, Christian, Hindu. No, my friend, my friend, we're in the Jesus debate. Or any. This is a debate. It's not a monologue, it's not me just preaching. It's a rational discussion and debate, right? And in rational discussion and debate, each person has to provide evidence. Your position has to have evidence or it's not rational. My position has to have evidence. It's not just fair for me to produce evidence because what you're doing then is you're putting the bar too high for me. You're saying, I've got to prove it, but you don't have to do anything. That's not the case. You've got to provide evidence as well. Yeah? Right. So I'll, I'll give you evidence for Jesus existing and you give me evidence that he didn't exist. 
You're saying it didn't exist. I'll give you evidence it existed. Josephus, a Jewish historian who lived in the area of Jesus, not so long after Jesus, said Jesus died under Pontius Pilate. Tacitus, a Roman historian, who lived near the time of Jesus, said that Jesus died under Pontius Pilate. Now, in scholarship, when you have your enemies say something about you, it's probably true. So, Jesus probably existed just on the basis of Tacitus and Josephus. Now, that's evidence outside the Bible. Wait a minute. Now, you provide evidence that Jesus did not exist. You have made that proposition, now you make the evidence. I've given you the best scholarship in the world today from people who are not Christians who would agree with me, even not Christian scholars would agree with me that Jesus died on the cross. Dominic Crossan, who's a world authority, who's a skeptic, doesn't agree with what I believe, says that Jesus died on the cross is one of the most well-attested facts in ancient history. Now you made the proposition that Jesus did not exist. Over to you, sir. Documents. You can go and read Josephus. His, excuse me. No, wait a minute. You can go and read the history of the Jews by, by Josephus. You can go and read the history of Rome by Tacitus. I'm telling you scholarship that most scholars would agree with, and you can go and study the evidence. Right now, we've given you the historical evidence for Jesus. You've not counted that. You've not counted that. But you went on to other stuff, and you made some good points. So let's go to those other stuff. But you did equivocate. You did move from the topic. You said, why did God come to a little bit of the of the world in Israel? If you read Romans chapter 1, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Romans chapter 1 says that everybody knows there's a God in two ways. God says in Romans chapter 1, God says in Romans chapter 1 that all of us know there's a God because of creation. So you're saying, well, why did God... Uh, yeah. Mr. Sowen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what was that? It's the King James Bible. All right. Sure so, so... Because so, so, uh, while you're talking to him, you can... So, you can... so the, my friend, what I'm saying is, God says, by his creation, that, that speaks of God, right? So you're saying, why did he go to a little land and he not spoke to everybody else? But he's saying that even creation speaks of God. You can see there is order in this creation, this order in that tree. Why, 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 does, he, why does he need to, to finally tune everything? Like, if, he, if, he's only, if he can only create life in one way, then is he really creating it? If he's just following the same instructions, 
Who's following a set of structural instructions? Because it might not exist in one way, so and it's not really operational, it's not designed, it's just designed it's just instructions. Well, that, that counters your argument, because if there's only one way, it shows that it was created. For example, chance, wait a minute, chance producing a universe that is only one way is illogical. Chance has multiple options. Yeah? The fact that the universe is ordered in that if this Earth was a few miles nearer to the sun, we'd burn. If it was a few miles away from the sun, if it was a few miles away from the sun, we'd freeze. Yeah? So the Earth is in the right place at the right time. That should make you think that that's a mind behind that, not chance. Yeah? So are you open-minded? Okay, if you're open-minded, do you believe that miracles have happened? No. There was an atheist called David Hume, a philosopher, yeah? And he was open-minded to miracles and he investigated miracles that happened a hundred years before him. And he had five criteria for these miracles. The people had to be intelligent, they had to be this, that and the other, yeah? He investigated these miracles that happened in the time of the 16th century in Catholic France. Right? When he investigated it with his five criteria, he said, according to my five criteria, that, that they've got to be educated, honest, etc. He said, according to my five criteria, these miracles happened. But guess what he said then? He said, but the miracles did happen because miracles don't happen. In other words, he's saying that even though the evidence is there, he's not going to believe it because he doesn't see it happening in nature himself. Yeah? Now here's the point, at least he was honest and had a five criteria. If you're saying miracles have never happened, what criteria do you have when you're reading the Gospels to say that the Gospels never had any miracles? What's your criteria? You, you asked me if I believe that miracles have happened, and I said I don't. You didn't actually ask if miracles have happened. I don't believe in them, but I think that they happen. We just don't have an understanding of the natural world. And okay. I think if a God does exist, which I don't really believe, yeah. we would operate within the boundaries of the natural world. I understand what you're saying, that's a good... No. That, that is, see that, you, you obviously have studied some study or thought on, on this kind of stuff, yeah. So, but what you were saying about Earth, which is what stopped me, yeah, you know, he yeah. said a few miles that way, a few miles the other way, yeah. freeze or, you know, it's called the Goldilocks zone. And, yeah. But you think about that, in, this, in the Milky Way galaxy, there are 200 billion stars. Yeah, yeah. And in, like, say, the Hubble Deep View, which looked at 1% of space, yeah, they found yeah. trillions of galaxies. So, yeah. but is it not beyond the real answer possibility that it could have just happened by chance? Okay. Be it by, you know, Define chance. Chance. What's chance? chance. chance. What, what, just, so, Define I, I, what chance is. Yeah, but the thing is, I don't want to put you on the spot yeah, because it would be extremely difficult to define it. But just give me a, a rough idea of what you think. Chance is the possibility of something, of what something can happen at one time. But what, what everyone forgets when they say, oh, is this a miracle or is it happening? It's the fact that we have an infinite amount of time to play with in this universe and an almost infinite amount of stars, planets. So eventually, whether it's almost one to a hundred trillion trillion, somewhere is going to land in the middle of the zone where liquid water, light, oxygen is created. Okay. There's a, an evolutionist called Dr. Monod, who was a, a, a Nobel Prize winner in evolution in the 1960s. And he said about, he just, I know it's a different subject, I don't want to equivocate, but it, it, there's, there's some interesting, it has an interesting uh, in, in this, you know. He said that, that evolution was chance. Now, evolu evolutionists today would not agree with that. They would disagree with him. They would say that mutations and natural selection, that that's not fully chance, yeah? yeah. Right, but he was honest and said evolution by chance, but he realised that if it is by chance, it just statistically, it doesn't add up. Statistically, you know. And there was a, a conference in the 1960s where mathematicians came to the evolutionists. They weren't Christians or creationists, they were evolutionists. They were evolutionists, and they did statistical analysis of evolution. And they said it's just impossible. So you can have 
infinity to play with. But when you're playing with infinity, you're not playing with mind. You're playing with matter. Right? And our position is we're playing with mind. But we're saying that mind is behind the universe. Mind produces all this. What you're saying is we've got infinity and chance. And that all